It's a question that gets asked from time to time. What type of activities are there in Fly Simulator 2020? Well, aside from an entire planet Earth and a load of planes that have been very well simulated, there's a few additional options for those who may want them. And these include bush trips, flight training, and of course, challenges. Let's jump in then and see what those are all about. We've had a good look at the world map then, but there are many other options here, including the current live event challenges of flight training and activities. First up, a very quick look at the live event. This then is a time limited challenge that will swap out every couple of weeks. There should be a whole bunch of these, so it's interesting to see what these are going to be when the sim finally releases. Let's head back to the main menu and check out a few of the other options. So a flight training. We got eight options here. These go into quite some depth. And if you've never used a flight simulator before, this will be the perfect place to start. It will get you off the ground, uh, get you up in the air, teach you how to fly, and you'll even get used to landing. I'm gonna let you take a look at this just to give you a bit of an insight into the quality of the lessons. Take a look at the attitude indicator. As the name implies, it shows your current attitude. The white line is the horizon with the sky above and the ground below. That orange element in the middle aligned with the horizon, that's your plane. So the sim effectively takes you through all of the important elements from walking you through the HUD and the uh, cockpit here to how to fly the plane. There'll also be parts where it'll walk you through a landing and takeoff as well as a level flight. So uh, you don't really need to worry if you've never played the sim before because Flight Simulator 2020, it really does have you covered in this regards. Now as well with other activities, we got landing challenges. There's quite a lot of these famous, epic and strong winds. Each of these has an entire subset of challenges which you may want to keep practicing as well, they'll improve your flight skills. And the fact there's three effective different difficulty levels there means that there's something for everyone. Now this is the Jacksonville landing challenge. I haven't actually flown a jet much before so I wasn't planning on attempting this uh, challenge. I just wanted to show you the environments. But at the last minute I thought I will have a go but fudged the approach due to capturing footage. And well, this gives you a bit of an idea of how not to land a complete mess. So yeah, make sure you land on the runway, I guess. Now, one thing that's common across all the landing challenges is that they are in absolutely stunning environments with well, the best selection of the time of day and weather effects just to emphasize how good these places actually look. That was Ontario, Canada, and this right here again is Courchevel. Beyond the landing challenges and the flight training, we have bush trips. And this is where you're likely to be spending a huge amount of time. Each bush trip is in the multiple hours to achieve. This flight duration is 9.3 hours. This can be completed in sections. We can see that over on the right, there's 25 legs to this particular bush trip. Each bush trip comes with a really nice description telling you what to expect and essentially describing different legs of the journey. And just over the side there again, we can see each leg and how long each leg will actually take. Some of these are shorter than the others. Some of them are fairly lengthy. Of course, all of them will be taking place in a bush plane. So a little bit different to what you may be used to if you're not used to this type of plane. And here we can see the different areas for this particular bush trip. Uh, basically, this one is in Yosemite, an area I'd very much like to go to myself. We've got a couple of others here. This one is in the Balklands. Again, the same thing applies. Nice little description. Uh, a journey here that's roughly eight hours in length, 16 legs and multiple sections. So you only have to do one section at a time, whatever suits you. The third bush trip is in Cochrane. Uh, we've basically got 25 to 30 hours approximately of bush trips here in the sim, and I'm fairly sure that a Sobo Studio will be adding more as time goes on. Or at the very least, I'd be very, very surprised if they didn't. Now, as for the bush trips themselves, these are very well put together. We've got a written nav log over on the left and the VFR map on the right, which is all mapped out, telling us the route we need to take. And we don't have any GPS here, although you can use the uh, VFR map, I guess, as a form of GPS. But when it comes down to it, you're going to be uh, mostly relying on your compass and dead reckoning. Uh, we've got some uh, coordinates on the top of each section of the legs of the journey. And speaking of which, I'm going to leave you here with the first few moments of me heading off on this particular bush trip. 
As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys and girls next time.